we get an engage from Giant X. The re-engage with the Max Storm. Mickey! Oh, damn you, fine! Broken Blade jumps into the back line. Well, Jackie's is doing a bit of work himself, but Broken Blade, you beauty! If you don't get MVP, I won't be here next game. Now is Leona finally gonna get into the midst of the fight? Hostile Takeover is there. Now we're gonna go down. Super still standing. Crucially, that is one mega fed Zeri, but they can't finish off on screen time. Yes, they can! Super still alive! It's a better for Super! Now G2, Mickey, look at the follow-up. Rapper wants to try and hit the game. Who? Already used the off the oh! It's still humanoid, baby! It is a Marek ready to go Ooh. in as well. Equalize, beautiful, and Fresco went golden right in the middle of the hot fire. He'll get burnt, as now with the ulti following through, it's Giant X cleaning house. He'll get burnt by another Odo, nice shot. Look at a burn, fire from the sky! Oh, but the Pedios are holding down, Photon! He can't turn fast enough to kill everybody! I have not seen a Rumble 1v9 like this in the LEC in at least five years, but here Photon is making it work! Yes. Then all oh, Disky in trouble. Pullback. Root is good. Alti to follow. Now flash forward. Three man from Nisky. Nisky mounts up in the Herald to survive. He's going after Photon. He just drifts right through. Oh, it's the car's point all over again, baby. Fast and Furious. SK want to end this one quick. They got dinner plans. I mean, he's charging in. Oh, it's a four man. It's a crash down. It's a pop up. It's a pop down. Blink and you'll miss it because the fight is over and it feels like the game goes with it. He's not to be trifled with the sum healing comes through a dredge line. Three engages as Jack's jumping in. Oh, you thought he could. And Team Aerodix punish hard. You make one mistake in front of these old men and they know exactly what to do. Bring layoffs, ladies and gentlemen, and we begin with Vitality and SK. Oh, hell yeah, we've been waiting for this. Ramping up the long road to MSI. And of course, we've already got one applicant who submitted nice and early. It was G2 with myself, Asterix and Betis. We'll be taking you through the calls for today. Starting, of course, with Team Vitality and SK. See if they can make that long run as well, Mr. Betis. SK have had a difficult spring split. They've been struggling to close out a lot of their games. Asterix, they were able to get that Ultimately, much needed win against Rogue in the tiebreaker. True. But the question is, what form will they show us this week? The SK of Winter doesn't seem in the same form right now. And Vitality, they've been a bit inconsistent, I would say. So far, they did only lose three games throughout the, uh, the spring split. One of them was to SK relatively early on in our season. True. Obviously, they've shown some very high highs fighting for the top spots in the LEC. So let's see what they show us today because new patch 14.6 back to live draft. Okay. And that means we're going to be seeing these picks the same time the pros are. Varus already taken away from Execute. But let's see what else is prioritized. Again, things like Smolder change around. The Karma change around big as well. Center from a position that can play for a lot of CS in the bot side to now more of a support orientated as that goes down to 2% with the soul collecting. So again, we'll pause and wait and see what the changes are in the LEC because you know, Betis, this morning I was watching uh, the PCS and they're still looking at like the Lucian Namis, man. They're still <laughs> looking at the strong 2v2s. LEC's veered away from that. They've stuck to things like the Varus, the Callista, which have already been banned away with the Maokai Flex as well being taken away from Is SK. the Senna going to be the final ban? Something we often see taken away from cars. you got to remember Senna was nerfed on 14.6, but that it was AD carry specifically. Yep. So they could very well still put Senna in that support position with the Nautilus, taking a lot of the farm. Hilly on his Nautilus, more than happy to be that resource-intensive support. With the Orianna gone, will the Senna be the first pick? Or perhaps they look to lock in something like the Vi. Rumble for Photon is open. He's only got his hands on it once this split so far, but we know how terrifying he can be on the champion. Yep, Deathless as well in that one game too. So in some of the replays leading up to this, as to how big he can be on the champion. A carry champion for Photon as well is exciting. Since he's going up against Irrelevant, which has still been, I think, one of the most consistent parts for SK, as talked about on the desk, while mid-jungle isn't synergizing as well as it did in winter, at least in spring, Irrelevant has transitioned over that class we know him to be as bottom side for SK is the next look at here. With something like Zeri still available, I mean, we've walked away and Smolder is still up and available, but yeah, maybe with the changes, teams don't want to touch it. 
with Zeri still being high priority after what we've seen in the past patch. One of Exekick's preferred champions, no surprise that he'll head in that direction. Vi is not something we have actually seen a lot from Isma. However, it is something that is often banned against SK so far in this split. Right now, they're just dancing through a bunch of different jungle options. Okay. And it's going to be something safe in the Sejuani. Now, this is something I do often expect from Isma. Yep. Regularly see things like Renekton as a potential pair up with the Sejuani, maybe even a melee mid laner. Things like Yone, Akali have both been good matchups alongside it. Maybe even Silas. Not that we've seen a huge amount of Silas, but we'll have to wait and see what that mid matchup will be from Niski. The Vine going to be locked in for Dagla, should come as no surprise. Bye, and Ari. then for Vitio, his Ari. So a very aggressive top side of the map. We're expecting more scaling safe on the bot side. This is very much leaning us towards that center pick for Kazi. He may even consider Ezreal here if he wants to play something a little bit safer, a little bit more independent towards the bot side of the map. I'll have to wait and see, though, depending on their direction as SK looking around at their draft. And, of course, back. Azia is back. Niski very comfortable on the champion. A mainstay throughout, well, the global scene, I should yeah. say. And uh, many pros will be happy to have this champion back in their control. Strong team fighting presence from SK. A lot of range. Zeri and Azia, great front to back team fight. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. A very simple composition to start off from SK. You're looking at maybe a little bit more engaged from either your support or top side to then round out with potentially a third damage threat or more utility, depending on how hard committed they want to be to this front to back. Whereas for Vet Vitality on the other side, I think it suits the style that we've seen so far. They can be very bloodthirsty in the early game, they can be very aggressive. I think it's been talked about a lot as to how they push the limit, not only with the support, but with everyone else behind. So, so far for Vitality, as they ban away the Renekton, getting rid of some of the pieces that can make that an annoyance for them in the early game too. Yeah, we talked about it, right? The Renekton Sejuani is something that can be a strong pair, and they're going to remove that. Nautilus Senna, also a good option for Vitality, yep. also going to be removed by SK. The question is, do they want to remove the Senna here, or do they sit there and think that, you know what, now the Nautilus is gone, we don't have to worry about that. Instead, they're going to remove another potential scaling AD carry in the Jinx. So, Definitely targeted towards that bot side of the map makes a lot of sense. Will Vitality remove a few more options from that top pool? Something like thinking about what could be good into Rumble. Maybe they're worried about a Gwen, but that's a lot of AP on the top side of the map. Jace. Maybe Jace is something yeah. that they're concerned about. Cassante could be something. Not that I love that into the Rumble. Obviously, you're looking at champions. A lot of these champions aren't that great into the top side. It's actually going to be the Jax taken away from Irrelevant. God, remember Irrelevant, one of the best Jax players that we have. Oh, yeah. And uh, unfortunately, it was insta lock before I got a chance to start. I was going to say Rakan, a very common pairing alongside the Zeri, immediately going to be locked in for SK here. So there's that additional part of Engage. Now Irrelevant has a lot of freedom to go kind of wherever he wants with that top lane pick. Maybe Aatrox still open as a possibility. Volibear, Nah, there are definitely some safe options for him on that top side. And I also want to say with the Rakan takeaway, takeaway from Hillasang as well, is you would have had this to pair up with an instant Yasuo with the but center. Garzi. Now, the only thing is, as we round out that bottom side, no setup here for the said Yasuo. Where else is knockup coming through? Individual from Vi. But that's about it. Kazi's going to be on his own ship. So Kazi has one recorded Yasuo game professionally. Okay. It, it was a loss. I don't know when that Yasuo game was. All up, I know is that he's got one <laughs> Yasuo game. Okay. So, okay, they're going to go for a Yasuo center bot lane. Definitely more on the scaling side. I think that Yasuo can have a relatively safe laning phase, but the, I think the beauty of Yasuo Center, we've seen this in last week of the LEC, actually. You have push when paired up with the center, specifically into things like the Rakan. So I think they should be able to have control here, room for be able to scaling. And we know that a lot of their strength is this mid jungle top side with this bot lane being that scaling option. Right. You don't have a lot of setup for the Asso outside of the Vi, which means that we're not expecting any like five man, multi man knockups. But you do have a lot of backline threats. Vi diving in, the Rumble ultimate. Okay. Typically, SK want to play a standard front to back composition here, right? You're very reliant on your Azir and your Zeri to be able to dish out damage to the front line. Vitality's goal is to find a ways past the front line. They have a lot of mobility on their side. Uh, if the Ari can connect the charm, if the Vi ultimate connects onto anyone, the Yasuo is immediately going to pounce. Sure. You've then got the Senna ultimate to provide that widespread shielding from her ulti as well. It's going to be an interesting dynamic and ultimately down to how they set up around these neutral objectives. How easily can they gain access onto their priority targets? I'm excited for our first game of playoffs. I mean, again, it's a crazy draft to open up, I think, as well for Vitality. Obviously, having that option to dive in 
But if it doesn't succeed, as you mentioned earlier on, but if SK play the front to back, then this game one is theirs. As we open up the best of threes, and yes, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be looking at this and saying, is spring looking a lot like winter? The answer is yes. As SK and Vitality went on the rift up against each other, and in the first round, Vitality with the 2-0 to open up. SK then had to play the lower bracket. And so we'll see this time around, come spring, come the run to MSI, if SK can change it around this time. Vitality, again, really good in the in, in this season. I, I think better performance in this season, naturally. Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, we were looking at this team, their final win of the season as well, launched them up to top two. You know, G2 being third is crazy. And the fact that Vitality, Fnatic finish above them, and the fact that Vitality finished where they did. I think, again, you've got to put the, the faith in people like Douglas who's come in as a rookie this year. Photon has been consistent again as such a great top lineup and held this bottom lane that can be really aggro in the 2v2 as we're already seeing them push X-Kick out of his own jungle. X-Kick, though, avoids giving Haley any stacks. That's good. Heal still available for Haley. They have control over that tri brush. Looks like Isma is going to start on his bot side. And Douglas is going to do the opposite by starting on his blue buff as well. So both junglers should be avoiding each other in this early game. Remember that what we talked about is that Vitality have a very strong top side of the map. You're going to have priority in this top lane one versus one. Against Zia, uh, Grasp, it looks like Misty's going for that tank build that we saw just before he was disabled. I was seeing it a bunch over in North America. I remember Jojo bringing it out a couple times. Then we also saw it over in the LCK. Not sure if we did actually see it in the LPL or if we actually had I the think opportunity a few times to. We did, yeah. But it wouldn't surprise me yet. Um, but basically, you build a lot of tanky stuff. You build yep. things like Abyssal Mask. I think there's also a Frozen Heart in there as well. And it's all just about that durability. And you still actually have a huge amount of damage uh, in the late game, uh, assuming you can get there, of course, which Vitality, with their strong mid-jungle, are going to look to try and avoid. Whereas I would love to see them trying to leverage this strong mid-jungle to either put pressure onto Niski or using that mid-jungle to roam towards sides and find advantages elsewhere. Whereas for Isma and Niski, I mean, if they're the ones who get to chill out a little bit, it'll be interesting to see the dynamic in the early game because this split hasn't felt as controlled or as powerful, potent, use whatever your word you want, from Isma and Niski as a duo. We'll have to see how they sync up if they do it all. Setuani on the bottom side of the map right now is... You talked about this 2v2, Betty is already off to a bit of a bang as Healy takes a dangerous tray, but again, there is a lot of sustain down here from the center, so I won't worry too much as Isma just gets in our face as we switch the cap. But you look at the map. Pushing lane top, pushing lane bot, pushing lane mid. Hello. Well, there you go. There's a sync up, isn't it? Flash done. Nice opener from SK when we're just talking about mid jungle. That's a nice way to show appreciation towards the same fact. Is this not gone? Video's got to step up to the wave. He's just burnt. He's flashed. He's trying to rush it, thinking, nah, I'll be fine. As Isma comes on in, he's got the flash, the flails out. All he needs is a couple more autos, and Video's going to die. That charm off the cooldown, and it doesn't matter. First blood comes down, and well punished from the greed of Video. I mean, I will say I'm surprised that Vito died to that. We just saw Daglas and Isma trading heads yep. around the Raptors. You should have expected that he was hovering around that bot side. Now, admittedly, Vito was hovering around the top side of his lane, but his wave was in an awkward spot. He went for a very fast push early on, and Niski just said, hey, you can come mid and punish it. And that's exactly what they did. Vito then returns to the lane to try and push it out. But I think he needed to work with Daglas there to help yeah. get the push in order to safely back away from the tower. Ultimately ends up losing his life and SK find themselves in first blood. You can see the vitality for the response of play. Now going to try something in this red buff, but smite there for Isma. Nope. It's given over to Daglas. So good approach, approach from the play, excuse me, as vitality try to get some gold back after that misstep from the mid laner. TP is going to come in. Ultimately, Vito are not going to lose a huge amount off the back of that. Mm -hmm. You can see a small gold advantage for Niski, but this early on, it's nothing too detrimental. Uh, what you'll start to see those advantages gained is now in the next space timers, right? If one mid laner can force the other one back a little bit earlier than they would like, that is where you can definitely gain some advantages. Sure. But overall, bot lane going well, top lane going well for Vitality. You can see CS lead starting to mount, and unfortunately for Rakan lanes, there's just very little you can do into range supports. And Yasuo with good wave clear early on and a, and a lot of mobility and a lot of tools to kind of weather any sort of poke, they have full control over this lane. They're going to even get themselves a plate. Exekick just doing what he can to try and get some farm. I look at the junglers, I see Isma hovering around, but yep. he's pathing up towards his wolves. So I don't expect any gank to come out from him anytime soon. I mean, really nice. Again, the 2v2 continuing to watch it out. We're just seeing pummel after pummel towards that turret. 
But as you said, there's limitations on the fact that DOS can't do much in this lane, but that's exactly what Vitality want. The 2v2 set up to succeed. And there's a lot been going on in my mind this week, watching how Vitality play, watch how they play out the game. Right now, they're playing it out on multiple fronts. Their aggression bot also leading to topside. Daglas getting grubs, while Isma now moves into Fog of War trying something, but there's no trade here yet. Meteor has to feel like Isma's trying to throw in a gank. Just really great awareness from Daglas, for the record. Uh, when he reset back out onto the map, he obviously went to his top camps. They had information that Isma started bottom because right. due to that little skirmish, he got level three with his blue buff, which they then knew meant, oh, he's done a full side bot clear and he's pathing up towards top. That means that Daglas, upon returning to his top side camps, can assume that Isma's opposite him towards his bottom side, giving him the freedom to do grubs uncontested. He also has the, pot, the push in top lane. Vito can also collapse if he needs to. So uh, able to secure that early objective, and unfortunately for Isma, because he has no control of a bot, it's difficult for him to cross map. Opening up Daglas to be able to secure the early dragon as well, once his bot lane returns, especially once Vito gets level 6, which he's just ticked over to now. They have a lot more kill pressure in mid lane that uh, Niski has to respect. And what I like about Vitality here, Betty, is as well, there's options in multiple lanes too, not just mid, right? If that mid starts moving, bot, okay, dive threat there. Top side as well, noting the Rumble now having level 6 as well. There's a lot of options being created by these ultimates of Vitality around the first Herald that will be coming up in, in moments' time. Sorry, second set of Grubs. Man, I'm, I'm about 10 patches behind. <laughs> <laughs> and also the first Dragon that's still sitting there on the bot side. That uh, for video, as you mentioned, see what he can do after pushing this wave and trying to make movement into the Fog of War while Vitality just received the wave bot maybe do something similar too. So, Vito wants to get a good base off. He's just going to clear out the wave. I believe the next minion wave should be a cannon one as well, which means that he has the freedom to go back to base, has a little bit more time. He's going to go for an early Merc Treads into the Sejuani. Does make sense, right? You get a lot of value when playing into that Azir Sejuani mid-jungle duo. Um, the bot lane is actually setting up a slow push. This could be in consideration of looking to try and contest for another Drake in the near um. future. Or perhaps they're just concerned about the fact that right now Vi is on the top side of the map and trying to go for a fast push means that they could be in a little bit of danger as well. We see Isma already pathing towards that bot side. Kazi needs to be careful. I like the dart back and forth. The sweeping blade used well, but the ulti comes through first. Kazi now looking for a knockout because X kick has already popped the lightning. Kazi at half HP too as Isma gets blown away, but the flash gives him space. A nice cue from Kazi to get out, but four summoners burn from that trade in bot side. Well, we were talking about it. We thought that they were trying to avoid pushing the lane aggressively, and then they go for an all-in anyway. And uh, Isma makes his way towards bot, ends up finding a nice punish. Gets all of the summoner spells out now. Opens up Dragon as a possibility. They don't have full information as to where Daglas is, but they should feel pretty confident trying to force a fight. And with that first Dragon going down, at least for SK, we talked about the front to back. That's great as Niski tries to jump on in. He needs a flash ulti here. Kazi and Hillisang have no summoners, but they're out of range. It's just a Dragon. No extra side piece there. Unfortunately, the meal available, not available from KFC this time around. So Isma just has to bide his time and see where he can approach next. But at least for SK in this early game that we were saying, well, look, the, the options being created by Vitality are so much more. At least they've been able to claw back and slow it down a little bit for how we talked about their composition. They certainly have. I think uh, Irrelevant is doing the best that he can in top lane. You expect him to be at a deficit when playing into a rumble, specifically Photon's rumble. Oh, we yeah. know how scary he is on the champion. And uh, being in a 20 CS deficit, kind of what you'd expect in this matchup. In the mid lane matchup, Niski doing very well. Like, this is a very standard mid lane matchup. Very safe, very secure. The bot lane one is the one where I'm a little surprised by how well Kazi and Hilly are doing. Like, you yeah. think about the matchup, we talked about it. Obviously, it is favorable for the Asso in the center, just because of the range that Senna has to bully Doss out of the lane. But now, level six secured for Hilly means that he can start making his way out onto the map. The next Grubs becomes the point of contention, spawning in about 35 seconds. Doss looking for an opportunity in top lane. Just going to be met by a ward and unlikely to be able to convert that into much else. But Photon is cautious about the fact that there could be a Sejuani right yeah. behind that Rakan as well. So Vito going to make his way up towards top so that he can rotate in the event that any shenanigans should occur. But the wave gets shoved in from Photon, at least that's there. I mean, you know, having to move up without that information gathered, Photon now just kind of playing around the fact he can poke down while you can see Hillisung has also moved up here, now syncing up with Daglas a bit more as well. As Vedi has told you, two seconds of the grubs come up as Isma launches the prison out. Hillisung might be in trouble. It's a double knock up as well. Good CC from SK. And Hilly's on a hair's breadth with no summoners from before. Isma flashes and matches and down he goes as Niski sends Daglas on the spot. That ult is something to give him time and it works. How does it work? You don't know until you see it with your eyes. The charm as well, almost catching Doss on the way out, but 
Man, Dagler felt like he should have died there, but SK just couldn't finish the job. A nice collapse from Doss and Isba mean that they find another pick onto the... The center who has no summoner spells. Hilly, there's very little he can do. As he gets closer to the tower, he throws out the ultimate. Maybe there's a window where he could have thrown it out earlier, but at this point, you're just doing your best to retreat. Throws the ulti out here, flash committed by Isma. Niski then joins the fray. A nice ulti from Daglas gets a knock up onto three. Then look at this rumble ultimate into the charm. Yeah. Just not quite enough damage to kill anyone. Means that SK secure another kill. Vitality though back on the grubs. Isma making his way out. Dos not level six just yet, but he's here to join the party. We see Ari stuck underneath her tower. No ulti available, of course. Nor for Photon either. That's going to be a route down onto Dos, and it interrupts the charm too. Good pick. Dos can't get out, and Video secures a kill while now one grub left behind. SK were able to deny six, but not five. So Vitality in the end also getting the pick off. They have the gold lead, and it's 2,000 for that amount here at the 11 minute mark. So the early game still going spectacular despite SK finding that pick before. There was so much on cooldown for both sides in that exchange that I'm honestly surprised that SK oh, tried to fight that. Might be dead. I mean, rumble overheats and there you go. Big bad Photon again performing out of his right mind. No flash on Irrelevant means that uh, Photon can pick that one up. Nice damage coming out from him, leveraging the overheat to perfection. Vitality just like that equalized the kill score. And look at the gold, Hysterics. Two and a half K. I just said 2K before, and it's already jumped up 600 gold. I wasn't even on the, on the money mark at all. It's, uh, it's crazy how quickly Vitality are finding these advantages. So much of it sitting in that top line. Photon securing that kill. Another plate as well. Bot. Means that he is fully in the driver's seat right now. Vitality, they found advantage after advantage. Dragon in a minute's time. You imagine this will be the next point of contention. Daglas hovering around the bottom side of the map, and Kazi going to be left isolated moving forward. Wouldn't be surprised to see Hilly start roaming with his jungler, start yep. securing more uh, stacks on his passive. Currently sitting at 42, 12 minutes in. Not the worst. Okay, so it's not the best. It's not the best. <laughs> All right, there you go. There are some demon center players out there. That right? is true. <laughs> I think the fastest I've ever seen, what, 100 stacks is probably about 17, 18 minutes. I think it's great. No, maybe it's even faster than that. Maybe 16 we're talking about. There's no one to reference. Photon's going to get ulted in the meantime, though. Equalizer does come down. Ulted a little bit late from Hilly. You can't do too much in the response. The ganking squad there and their tanks. So you just have to sit and watch. I mean, they make that look super easy. Hilly, right place, right time. Yep. But he just, as you rightly said, can't do enough. Photon without his flash against the combined CC of a uh, Cassante and Sejuani. It's not going to be enough, but Daglas. Corrupted. It's good. On to Isma. Remember, he's got no ulti, so one in return with a quick charm. That's a kill. Over to Daglas. Now, he picks up one himself. And right back on the board, our Vitality, as soon as we start praising SK. You're seeing how lethal the REVI combo can be there, oh, yeah. though. The second that the CC is over from Daglas, a charm follows it immediately. And to add to that, the single target CC from Hilly just adds insult to injury. There was nothing that Isma could do, even without his flash, even if he had his flash, rather. I don't think he could have gotten away with that one. Vitality now have control over the river. Isma making his way back out onto the map already. A great damage coming out from Niski. But Leandri's finished for him, chunking out Hillisang, only level seven. But uh, Hilly taking over to eight now, trying to get, oh my goodness. <laughs> Gotta be careful there, Hilly. Worth it for the song. Howdy, well. Nice. Doesn't matter if the, you get the salt. The problem is now you need to reset. So uh, SK problem, right. recognize that window and they're going to grab themselves the second dragon of the game. It's a competitive one, that's for sure. Glad to see both teams butting heads in our first game of this series. Oh, you'd hope so. I mean, as the best of three goes. Again, you know, last split, I feel like it was uh, a bit of a shock in the pan. I remember the Vitality SK BO3 actually from Winter, Betty which was like, no one expected Vitality to come rolling because they were wildly inconsistent, more inconsistent than now. It's, it's completely night and day, and SK just got blown out of the water for a team that were looking like a top three team at the end of winter, or at least midway through. You know, sometimes my memory's not great, Betty. It's hard. It's all good, man. It's really hard. I can't even remember what I ate for breakfast this morning. I say it consistently. I don't think I had breakfast this morning. I understand, like, while you do have a, a, a long, memory uh, throughout the history of the League of Legends. I feel like a lot of it is just the shy moments. And it's easy That's to true. not, you can't sacrifice You're those moments. you about my brain or yeah. everyone? Yeah, just, just yours, just, just yours. Just yours. Yeah. Okay. It's understandable, I get it.
Herald for Vitality, by the way. That was a cost of two dragons as a setup there. Great charm, though. Video might have kill pressure on X-Kick. He stands there, but the quickness shies him away. Is over the wall. What? X-Kick now flashes away. Video getting close. Oh, deception. That was lucky. That was almost a mistake, but because he gets out, I'm not sure if we call it that. So, I think I understand the idea from X-Kick. It's that my team is right behind me. I should be safe with this Rakan, and yeah. I can bait VTO out, which means that we can get a kill. But VTO reacts. It's almost like he's, I say almost like, he's clearly very aware of the collapse. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he he just sidesteps it very well. Good driving. Two oh, towers that secured. Gone. That's fine, they can still send it down here. I don't know if he'll actually make a uh, connection with the tower. Looks like that it won't. 07's in chat for Shelly. Service has been appreciated. Vitality gonna unlock two towers on the map and extend their gold lead now to three and a half K. What an early game from Vitality overall. They've had pressure in all three lanes. Oh yeah. Those are the uh, gold, oh, sorry, the, the leads that you can see at the bottom of your screen. 1.1K gold lead for Hilly, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah. True. <laughs> As this mark just gets burnt down a bit. And, you know, on Hilly's lead as well, he's been roaming quite a bit. As we saw earlier on, Doss was behind in experience. He's still a level behind, but that's kind of what you expect with uh, someone like a center who's always going to be in a minion wave to pick up souls. But, you know, Doss tried to roam a lot more. Didn't get off as much as you say that Hilly got off. And is it interesting to watch these supports in action because they obviously serve very different roles, very different purposes in this opening game. The sync up from Vitality has been good as now into SK's jungle. Not going to find too much here on the red buff as Daglas is just looking to see if he can count some sheep. Maybe it's Doss who should be going sleeping with the fishes as the knockup is there, but no damage onto Daglas considering the Vitality are also closely behind. So SK getting pushed back in their jungle as now the top side seems to be the next goal for Vitality to open up the map more. Makes sense. Last had a tower to play for. You've got Vito sitting bot lane, doesn't have TP, but he's just there to match the Azir. Getting information now on his side of the jungle, they've spotted out Isva. Just guarantees this top tower. It's a uh, good position for Vitality to be in as they secure the final ladder tower. Yep. Two minutes until Dragon means that this is the next point of contention. I say that word a lot, but I mean, this is kind of how pros think, right? You're always, you resetting like, okay, what's the next objective? What are we thinking about? What are we thinking about? And uh, SK, they get the cross map, they unlock bot tower. Their priority would love to be, we want mid tier one. That would be great. Gives us easier access into the enemy jungle. But the other thing is, oh, Dragon in a minute 35. We've already got two. Soul is a very easy win condition. Cloud Soul used to be memed on, but I think it's very powerful. I think it's great. Yeah, I think it's super strong Soul that uh, SK would definitely love to get their hands on. I remember that SK are more scaling front to back. Yep. They're not uncomfortable with their situation. They're definitely at a deficit, and it's going to be harder for them to contest this next objective because you look at the mini-map already, full mid-control already secured by Vitality. They've already started moving into their jungle. Hillisang and Daglas working together to secure that vision, look for potential picks, deny the vision away from SK as well. Overall, Vitality, really nice setup. Photon needs to be careful. I think he's just dead here. I mean, he's going to overheat for a second. There is a flash available. Don't listen to me again. This is why I get paid to yell. But now they know exactly where Isma is, which unlocks a lot of options for Literally. Vitality. They're going to look towards that tier two. Well, actually, it might be trouble. I mean, Card's going to get taken over the turret. He's just exploded upon center right won't save his life. And it's a shutdown. Now for the buyout on top of this Zeri. Can they get Exekick? They can't! They can't kill Exekick. He kites back in front of his team where Irrelevant is already so tanky. And with a knockback as well, Hilly's up next, and this is the problem. If they get a tank in front and the damage behind, it seems so easy for SK to execute like that. This is also why Irrelevant earns so much praise. Oh, yeah. What a great play from him. Vitality's logic and decision-making there all made sense. Uh, Mid-jungle enemy, top side, why wouldn't we push for these uh, Tier 2 towers? It makes sense. We see Exekick in mid as well. They're not expecting Irrelevant to just be sitting in that bush, creating this flank. You know, they... Okay, so they don't actually see Exekick off on the side, but it doesn't matter because they catch Kazi underneath the tower. They then turn it into a 2v2, which Irrelevant knows he can win. He focuses down Hillisang, a nice arrival of DOS, chain CC's Daglas to help protect Exekick, and they convert it into three kills. So they unlock the top tower. They're now on the dragon. And it'll be third as well. I mean, how's the steal from Daglas? He has to commit all or nothing at all. And nothing is the answer. Is teleport by the doubles being burned by Vitality. They're trying to run them down. But remember that Irrelevant has two items. This Cassante can flip it all back around and for Vitality to commit. Double summoners to come in late for the party. 
just means that salt points given by SK. Gold is caught up by SK as well. And Betty's, you already said they were chilling before. I think now, pool parties now, they've got the umbrella up. These guys are setting up some pina coladas right now. That's what, at least what I would do, is, is in this spot at 20 minutes. I mean, SK, you're quite right. They're in a very comfortable position right now. You're not the a beauty of person. Fair enough. I'm not a pina colada person. I apologize. I'm uh, work, work out what. On warm days, I like a glass of water with ice. That's me. <laughs> That's very PG thirteen. Really, PG 13 really, really wild time. Yeah, it is. A bit feeling, of ice. If wow. I'm feeling crazy, I might put an umbrella in it. And <laughs> oh, yeah. Keep the wind out of my ice cold water. You wouldn't put any fruit in your in your glass. No, of water. no. Come on, let's be on oh, realistic. Sorry. Right? Sorry, I gotta be. Perfect. It's not water if you put fruit in it. It's some <laughs> weird true. concoction then. Uh, uh, Sell for four dollars a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard. Yes. Uh, the beauty of the position that SK find themselves in now is, oh, they may have found a pick. Again, Photon didn't burn flash last time, though. Equalize is out. Damage Ooh. on Isma is out. The flash behind him as well. He's still overheating, but he won't get the chance to auto again. Niski sends him up against the wall, and it's a beautiful return from SK, but now they have to get out as Niski is the new target. He won't burn a summoner, but he will burn his life as it's a one-for-one -one try. I wonder if this is a Baron possibility. Isma is very low. Vizio is making his way up. Oh, actually, are they creating a collapse onto Vizio here? Relevant just doesn't care about the turret. Dos Not goes in. Slightly. We'll be able to shift his way out. The turret shot taken as well. Rest of Vitality are moving in. But remember, Daglas, no ulti to stop them from pushing in. So it looks like SK will just handle the wave for now. And back off with no dragon available, with only that Baron topside available too. So SK what I was going to play uh, I was going to say they could actually... Never mind, doesn't matter what I was going to say. The flash here from Photon is because he expects Isma to flash and he wants to stay within melee range so that he can hit him with the overheat and actually trade one for one. Okay. Unfortunately for him, he ends up getting stunned, so there was uh, nothing he could do. The follow-up from Vitality means that it ends up being a one for one at the end of the day. Flash burnt from Photon in exchange for flash from Isma. Hellasang also had to use his flash in that previous exchange, so a couple summoner spells down. Dragon will be in about two and a half minutes, but the point I wanted to get at was that SK can now threaten both Baron and Dragon at the same time, because the threat of the soul is real. Oh, they could just start it now. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Yes, Betty, they can threaten both, but they will choose to start with the Baron, as you still I mean, alluded pings, to. The pings are coming down. Vitality, they're suspicious. They don't know if this is a trap or not, but I think they're just going to get it. Now they see. I mean, where's the damage at? 3k Daglas, still? Daglas. Still! He does! Keep Vitality nice and strong, but now for the turnaround play, SK have brought in the quickness and Dots in a great spot. Nitsky's ult with so is Hillisang will take one for the team. It's a double already as they're diving this turret still here, and Kazi just has to sit, try and play around as a triple. Already given over to Exit Kick, but Video looking for one back. Three members for the Costa Baron. You still get the Baron under their nose. Vitality still bring tempo, but it's only going to be to their solo laners to see what they can do with it. Such a fast Baron that Vitality were caught unawares. If it weren't for the miracle play from Daglas, this could have ended in disaster. Oh, yeah. Over the wall. Oh, the smite was too early. The smite was just too early from Isma. And it means that Daglas secures it. The retreat then comes in for Vitality. They're, they're doing their best to try and escape. Kazi procs the Blade of the Ruin King, but it's not quite enough to get him to safety. Triple kill picked up by the Zeri is massive for SK still, but uh, it's an odd one. Three kills for Baron. Who is it more worth for? Ooh, debatable, honestly. SK still feel like they have control of the map right now. The Dragon spawning in 40 seconds. They're the one with control over the objective right now. But still better than giving a Baron over, as you said. I mean, it could be a disaster. SK picking up the Baron, sneaking that from under the thumb, and Vitality are left there chilling with the Dragon coming up in 30 seconds. The Stackless' angle could be huge. He flashes. He's going to cease and desist with the Equalizer on top. And Hasaki! Extra kick the target. They just need to finish it off. And finally, they do. Vitality all in. And it pays off 500 grand on red. I think you're getting about at least 250 back with Niski. Getting That's a kill on the Daglas to re-engage the flash away. Video's out for the time being, but the quickness there is Photon is burning a light dot. Flashes over and will get the kill by himself. It's so messy as SK still have numbers advantage, and Photon is left standing in the midst of the fight. It all erupted. It all just started with a great pick, and as Photon runs for his life, it was messier than my thoughts about breakfast this morning. <laughs> I mean, what a crazy fight.
so much commitment onto Exekick. It's the right target, and you can see the execution of the comp there. But let's look exactly as to why it took so long. The shielding that comes through onto Exekick is pretty valuable. The locket as well. But the problem is the Yasuo was so deep at this point that it was easy for SK to turn their attention onto the Yasuo and ends up being a three versus three. This is where it gets pretty interesting. Vitio getting outranged by Niski, losing all of his health and getting chipped away at. Doss then with a nice flash knockup secures a kill back. Iski now too close in range to Photon to allow him to get a kill. Ultimately though, this should be the soul for SK. Come back to life. Yes, it was indeed. Hillisang might be caught out though. Ooh, he has a nice flash edge. away. It does save his life. You're right. That item that he picked up. So at least getting out of there. But Cloud Soul given over as we come out of the replay. And again, SK have been trailing in gold this entire game, but never out of that arm's reach. It's still very valiant as they look for this front to back that continues to be angled by people like Isma. Doss irrelevant with the engage, while X kick and Niski, the DPS carries are doing it all. Quickness now comes through, turret goes down. It's the knock up again, and for Doss, he's sacrificing his life, but it's all in a good cause. This X kick can continue to stand up alongside Niski. The DPS must be cheering with how easy it is to front to back. I mean, that was a perfect representation of exactly how SK want to play the fights, right? Your front line goes in and your back line is nice and safe. They immediately oh, yeah. attack onto Ari, one of the more mobile carries that wants to be threatening the back line. But it's getting harder and harder for Vitality to actually execute on these fights. Irrelevant is such a monster. Oh, Kazi, well played, dodges way and again! Ooh. Oh, Kazi with the fancy feet. It's like watching Michael Jackson on beat it as the last breath gets him out as well. Niski under turret is tanking up as Equalizer follows through. Kazi is still alive dancing around. If only they could finish the job. Vitality would have had so much more, but SK are scampering away with their lives again. Vitality just don't quite have the damage to turn these fights in their favor. In terms of itemization and gold, it's still very close between the two teams. But uh, Exekick is becoming a real problem. God, this was so smooth, though, from Kazi. So like, smooth. Like, look nice sidestep, side nice dash there. Puts the wind wall up. Then the ultimate doesn't connect. He gets the knock up onto Niski. Gets back underneath his tower. Sidesteps again. But then Irrelevant drags him back into the team fight. And uh, there's nothing he can do. Very well played from Kazi. Great patient play there. Unfortunately for him, it is not quite enough. Gold's even for the first time in this game, at least but in a you, long while. But you have to look at the bottom of your scoreboard. 2.5k oh, well. lead for Exekick over his AD carry counterpart. A lot of the gold difference is because of how strong Photon is, but you just look at the items of Irrelevant, and that gold lead doesn't really matter. Yeah. <laughs> um, Locket, Redemption, Guardian, the E from DOS, all of it there to help protect his AD carry when he inevitably gets dived on. And again, X kick. I mean, it's been hard to kill him as we've seen already. Video's gonna try though. Spirit rush over the wall. Charm doesn't connect though. Equalizer is following through. So Vitality have got some good damage out, but Vitio's Video's dead. almost dead. Doss now looking for him as sending the blade out is good, but Daglas is isolated. And SK again, it's all these tools used to kill X kick, but they just never be able to finish the job. As Hilly over the wall, it's actually gonna be for Video. He's just destroyed for a shutdown. And Vettius, as we keep seeing these fights play out, now it just feels so hopelessly doomed. Card's gonna try again, but Irrelevant oh. gets a kill. It's a snipe down on Hilly from afar as well. SK with another. And these team fights are way too out of control. But it feels like Vitality's hand in it has just completely gone. A very different look for SK. Their early game, they fell behind a little bit, but they played these team fights to perfection. Their team fighting was arguably their weakest point so far this yeah. split, but they've cleaned that up coming into game one. I mean, it's an opener for game one for SK that looks brilliant. Still the resilience here in this game, comp or no comp, as X kick now has to run away. It might not be over yet. Thanks nice to the equalizer there. from Photon. I mean, he flashed in, used Hourglass while had the flame splitter up to kill the minions as much as possible. Flashed away, threw the ultimate down to then wipe out the minions and also force the already low health carries back. So, well played by him. Keeps the game alive for now, but it feels like it's just a matter of time. Baron available, and you imagine this is going to be the next objective. Early TP from Irrelevant to prevent any sneaky Vitality Baron as the rest of SK are resetting. Maybe thinking they can get a pick, because Niski hovers here. Remember, this is a damage Azir mixed in. So, Video will be destroyed as he checks the... He's like, hang on a minute. 
There's something going on in there. Seeing Irrelevant now is good as well. Zniski gets the shove back. Kazi was too far forward in mid. And he's just gonna die. That might open things up. The ult to get him out is a good attempt, but Niski gets the kill. Five versus four. Baron, as you said, Vedius. Now this just seems like an easy dub. Yeah. It's uh, just a matter of time now for SK. Impressive stuff from them overall. Again, have to come back to Irrelevant. The biggest shift in this game was the play that happened to bot lane. Yeah. Uh, Irrelevant catching out Kazi and Vitality as they're trying to siege onto that bot tier two. Unlocking the third dragon for them as well. Really just set the rest of the game up. I feel like Irrelevant has to be a candidate for MVP. We think back to playoffs of last split. Split, 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 The conversation was around Irrelevant versus Broken Blade for best performing top laner. I think that Irrelevant did have a bit of a shakier spring regular season, getting caught out a lot yep. and uh, not quite having the same impact. Definitely still having those very high value games, of course. Uh, but this game, I think he's really returned to form, having an incredible game so far. Trade of ultimates there. VTO now going to be useless for about 40 seconds while his ultimate is on cooldown. Useless. Fair call. <laughs> Without the ult, he feels like it. Uh, Niski as he steps up. I mean, just trying to do the final bit of damage that ends this game. Kai's going to be tagged down. There's the ult. He'll get run down here as well. No fancy feed allowed. They just run him through. One mistake and punish well. As SK going forward now with the tanks. Look how easy it is. Trying to deny that is Hillisang and Video kiting back, but in the front line, Photon sits until he's burned himself. Hilly jumped on, and the gap closed from SK is oppressive. The team fighting has been oppressive as well. And to open up this BO3 for our spring playoffs, the LEC say, hey, SK, you got your dancing shoes on today as well. To start us off, 1 0. Impressive stuff. 6 1, 14 kill score for Irrelevant, 4 to 17 for Isma. Top jungle really coming up clutch, of course, Exekick. Securing that triple kill definitely helped in terms of the damage. He was what oh, he needed yeah. to be alongside Niski. Their range and damage became harder and harder to deal with, but we talked about it, right? Vitality needed to find access onto the back line. If they could do it, kill the carries quickly, then it could be a one team fight. But uh, they never, the one fight where they really got to find that, it uh, didn't really pan out the way that they wanted to. Nope. So unfortunately for them, they ended up falling short. I'm sure they'll go back to the drawing board, make adaption. Adaptations for game two. Adaptations regardless. I mean, the team fighting cop worked out well as we go to a short break. When we return, hopefully we get something even spicier running into game two from Vitality and Escape. See you in a sec. Even the biggest champ needs a break. I'm tired. Me too. So, uh, what do you think? On to the next one? Let's go. Come on. Hey, shouldn't you be on stage right now? Yummy. Hey, you got a pick. Tom Kent? What? I, I was not expecting this. Crazy off meta pick that secured you the win. How did you come up with it? Oh. Uh, I just listened to my gut. 